everyone, this is Bridget with Bridget She Shed, and welcome to my video podcast. This is episode four of the summer of 22, where I will be knitting my best life. I'm coming to you from Arizona, southern, southeast Arizona, actually, which is here in the United States. A big welcome to all of my new viewers and to my returning viewers. And a great thank you to um, those of you that have subscribed. And thank you so much to those of you that um, have left comments. I've, uh, I appreciate every single comment. I read every single comment and I re uh, reply to them. So um, I believe I'm all, I'm all caught up on my replies, but if not, you will be hearing from me. So keep it, keep it coming, keep it coming. Make sure you hit that, that, that thumbs up and that subscribe button. I am amazed at how many subscribers I have so far with just this short time of being with you. Um, in this video, vlog, video, podcast, whatever you want to call it, but during our time together, this is where I share my love of um, all things that are yarn related, primarily knitting and crocheting. So um, let's go ahead and get started. I don't want this to be a terribly long uh, video. Uh, the wind is blowing, so hopefully I can get this done or may have to move indoors. Uh, let me see here. Here we go. All right. So what am I, what am I wearing? I am wearing, let's see if I can stand up, my summer sock camp 2022 t-shirt woohoo yes summer sock camp has started and that is a knit along for the summer from that is sponsored or hosted by Kay Litton of the um, crazy sock lady and I will leave all of the information uh, down below where you can find out about the Summer Sock Camp. Uh, it's a free knit along and it started May 28th and it runs through August 31st. And I'll have more on that uh, in the episode, but as always, oh my, I feel like I'm choking here. As always, excuse me while I get adjusted. <laughs> as always, um, where you can contact me on Instagram or on um, by uh, email. I'll leave all that information down below. Anything that I talk about, I put links uh, down below in the show notes or in the description box, okay? So let's get started. I have only one FO, finished object. And I talked about this in the last episode, episode three. And I finished my socks. These are my summer rib. I'll just put one up. It's easier. These are my summer rib vanilla socks. And they turned out so pretty. Look at that. And I go into detail about the about the sock on in episode three, but just really briefly because um, I can't talk enough about the yarn. The yarn is from uh, Essence of Autumn. This is their her uh, the colorway is called October. It's a very plushy yarn. Um, it's like a eighty-five. Uh, uh, 80, 80, 20, I believe. And the pattern that I used is just something that I kind of just made up on my own. It's just ribbing. It's just a vanilla slot sock. And all I did was just added a, um, a three by one rib all the way down. The toe is a rounded toe. The heel is the shadow wrap heel 
from Denise with Earth Tone Girls. I use this dark teal, which is by, I had in my stash, which is by um, Cloud, Cloud, Cloud Born. It's hard to say. It's a sock twist, a fingering weight. This is dark teal. I did a folded cuff with a pico edge. And again, I go into more detail in the previous episode. And then the toe, it's just a rounded toe that I used. This was uh, purple with some stash yarn that I had from years ago. It's lost its label. I have no idea what it is. But anyway, this is my one finished object. I was clearing my needles so that I would uh, be ready when summer sock camp started. So if you follow me on Instagram, you saw my post that said my bags are packed and I'm at summer sock camp. So basically don't bother me all summer because I'm at camp. All right, so that's my one finished object. Now for my whips. Well, let's see about my whips. So whip number one. has to do with Summer Sock Camp. I showed this during the last episode. What I showed you what I was going to be making. And this is the sock. I am using two circular needles, which I'll talk about in a minute. That's what you see hanging down. It's a cuff down sock. And here it is. There we go. That's better. And I've turned the heel. And I, so now I'm working on the foot. Oops. I'm working on the foot. Okay. So the um, yarn that I'm using is the May, no, the April 22 subscription to Yarnable. As you know, um, I love uh, my box subscription. And this is called Mermazing. There it is. And it's on her plush sock fingering. Uh, it's a 8515 and it is beautiful and so since it had this uh, marine aquatic look to it and theme to it i said hmm let me find a sock that would kind of bring that out even more so i found this sock pattern from summer lee designs called mermaid avenue socks And I am making it in a shorty version. And I am loving it. And for the cuff, many of you may have seen my um, video that I put out where I dyed the yarn which I'm trying to find the yarn. Hang on. I dyed the yarn for the cuff and I did a little demonstration of how I did that using um, food coloring. And here's the cuff here. Uh, there we go, it's kind of blowing out. And isn't that pretty? And so that will also be on the toe. So it's a one by one ribbing and then you go into this beautiful scale pattern. This pattern is very um, well written. Um, she explains everything in, in detail on, on how to make this sock. So I'm really enjoying this pattern. Um, I'm making the medium, which is for eight inch circumference. I'm using a size zero, uh, which is a US 
a US Zero uh, 2.0 millimeter and I have two different needles. This is my uh, Chow Gu and this is a Knitter's Pride Mindful Collection. That way I can tell the difference between the two cords. These are 16 inch. I've tried doing two circulars with 24 for socks, but that's just so much excess uh, cable and to me it just gets in the way. So these are 16 inches and I love it. I love the cable on the, um, on the Knitter's Pride Mindful Collection very much. The points, it's very pointy. So I like that. Very, uh, very comparable to the Chow Gu. So that's what I'm using here. Okay. All right. This is my first sock for a summer sock camp. Moving right along to, oh, let me just say one more thing before I go about sock, summer sock camp. Um, if you are new to sock knitting, check out uh, the Crazy Sock Lady. She has uh, tutorials for to help you with uh, learning how to knit socks. And that's one thing that I do like about the sock camp. You can get all types of help. So if you are new to it, new to sock knitting, don't say, oh, well, I can't. I don't want to join this because I don't know how to knit socks that well. Please join. She, we all would appreciate, and I know Kate would. We all appreciate every single person that's there, and we just have just a great, great, great time of knitting and posting our our socks and the conversations that happens just like we're at camp. So I hope you brought a beverage because I brought mine. I'm drinking iced tea. Don't worry. It's not a long island. It's a short island. Not a long island. <laughs> it's just regular tea. Anyway, um, I digress. Anyway, uh, item number two for whips. Okay. This. Oh, wrong bag. This is a test knit cardigan that I am doing for Safia Tally Designs. Safia is also known as the Drunk Knitter. That kind of, I guess my whole Long Island iced tea kind of segued into that. The Drunk Knitter, I don't know why she's called the Drunk Knitter, but anyway, she has a podcast by the same name. You can find her on Ravelry. Um, but she did a call for uh, for test knitters, and I signed up, and I was lucky enough to be chosen. So I'm working on this cardigan, and the, it started. We got the pattern. I'm gonna say like around on maybe on Monday, Memorial Day, the 31st, and we have a month to make this. We have to have the full body done and one sleeve. It's done on size US 4 needles, which is a 3.5 millimeter. So it does work up pretty, pretty quickly. There aren't any um, challenging stitches or anything of that nature. It's just pretty much all um, stockinette. So I'll show you what I have so far. I'm I'm just doing my raglan increases. It's made top down. So if you can see. So I'm about halfway with my increases. And you were supposed to use a sport weight yarn, but I don't have any sport weight yarn in my stash. And um, because it was, by the time I found out about the, the, um, the test knitting call and the short amount of time that you have to have this done, I didn't have time to really order any um, sport weight and get it in time, so I just went stash diving. So I am using a DK weight yarn. 
and I messaged uh, Sophia and she says, oh, that will be fine using a DK. And I actually got Gage, so that was really surprising. So the yarn that I'm using, um, I had four, four skeins of this and I'm not sure what I bought it for. I'm sure I bought it for something specific, but I didn't put what it was for. So it's been used for this cardigan. And this is um, Barocco Summer Silk. And it's really nice yarn. This is my first time using it. Like I said, I have no clue what I bought this for. So I know I had to buy it for something. Maybe it'll come up later. But its content is 45% silk, 43% cotton, and 12% nylon. Now, the pattern that the yarn that she uses in her pattern, it is 50% cotton, 50% soybean fiber, and 50, yeah, 50% cotton, 50% soybean. So I figured this isn't exactly the same because, you know, it's not soybean, but I thought that this would, this would be nice. This is so soft. The silk is making the cotton really, really soft. So, and it comes in these cute little, I don't know if you call this more of like a donut than a cake. And um, it has 240 yards on here and 50 grams. So, Barocco Summer Silk. When I have more done on this, um, I'll show you more. I don't want to show the picture just yet until I get confirmation from the designers that we can post on, I think our work on um, social media, but not the actual, I don't think I can post her picture of the sweater. But that's my test knit that I'm working on. And this pattern, when it comes out, I, she's planning on, I believe, a July release. That's why the short testing period. Um, it is size inclusive, up to a size 62 inch vest, which is uh, fantastic. I'm really liking the, the designers that are stepping outside the box and being um, so size inclusive with their designs. <clears throat> okay, next we have, I have this on my whip, but I haven't actually cast on yet. I finished my swatch and I blocked my swatch uh, yesterday and, but I'm calling it a whip because I'm getting ready to cast it on. And this is a cowl that is through, um, knit knit together with Kim and Jonah and they're doing their very first cow they are a new um, video podcast this just started and they are uh, collaborating with Mayak Fibers and Isabel Kramer I talked about it last week and I showed you the yarns last week so that cow started on June 1st they had a fantastic um, Zoom, live Zoom kickoff party and uh, Isabel Kramer was there from Germany and they had the, uh, Paolo, the Paula, the, the woman behind Mayak Fibers was there and she was one of the hosts from Italy and it was just really, really nice. I'd never been involved, participated in anything like that and it was so much fun. So here is my swatch. And these are my two colors, uh, Andrade or Ande and Gelso. I think I'm butchering those. But if you watch episode three, I'll go into more detail. So these are my two yarns. Again, this is what I'm doing, the Dingley Dell. You can do, you can knit anything you want. You do not have to knit an Isabel Kramer pattern. But I did pick an Isabel Kramer design. 
And so this is on my needle. This is also size inclusive up to uh, 54, I believe. So that is my third whip. Let me just check. Yep. That's my third whip. Okay. All right, let's get on to sips. And I have quite a few sips this time around. Um, first off, I got this adorable, adorable bag. It's by uh, Midwest Stitches. And this is from um, Breaking Yarn, uh, the uh, podcast. And she has a, her own um, shop where she dyes yarn, which is McKaylee. And these bags were made for McKaylee's uh, shop, Breaking Yarn, by Midwest Stitches. And this is cute. See the cute little uh, chemistry beakers? If you watch the show, uh, Breaking Bad, that's the theme that McKaylee's um, uh, Breaking Yarn is based off of. But this is a cute little bag, and it's a snap bag. Which, this is my first snap bag, which is neat. And see the inside? It's very roomy. It's got more of the beakers inside. And... Um, it has a handle on it. There's the handle has the periodic table. You could have uh, had the bag with the reverse with the periodic table here and then the beakers on for the handle, but I picked this one so that you can knit and walk. McKaylee is a big knit walker, I guess is what you call it. So I'm gonna practice knitting and walking on my treadmill before I get out in public because I'm one of those people that have a hard time walking and chewing gum. So I don't want to hurt myself walking and knitting, but great little bag. So that is one of my sips that has come in. And just in time for summer sock camp. Okay. Again, in time for summer sock camp. Another gorgeous bag. Okay. Isn't that cute? See the s'mores, the camping, the little campfire. This is by Three by the Sea Designs, as you know. They're my favorite bag and um, project and stitch marker maker. See the little stitch marker? It is of a campfire. Isn't that adorable for uh, summer uh, summer sock camp? Zipper top. And then look at the inside. Look at that lining. Marshmallows and campfire. How could I resist this? I know. I wish we had smell-o-vision because I can just smell the, the campfire and the chocolate and the graham crackers oozing. So in addition to the um, bag, I also purchased, of course, more stitch markers or progress keepers, keeping in line with summer. Isn't she adorable? Little starfish. <laughs> And what's, what's camping without doing a little fishing? So there's a little fish. Aren't they cute? Three by the Sea Designs. Check them out. Kim and Dreama. Great job. All right. Now we'll get into some yarny sips. All right. So I was watching, um, what was I watching? Oh, I was watching Knit Stars. Uh, 
and they were doing a, a live Zoom. And Knit Stars is a um, big yarn store in, I believe it's Tulsa, Oklahoma. And they were featuring work of uh, yarns uh, that are theme related for Gay of Gigi Made It. And she is the uh, iconic orange lady. And if you don't follow her, you need to. Uh, she's a fantastic uh, knitter and she uh, an activist. And um, I will make sure that I link her, inform her information where to find her as well. And they were featuring yarn uh, that uh, that's an orange for Gigi. And this is by Lola Bean Company. And Lola Bean is also a fantastic dyer and uh, activist um, as well. And I've been wanting some, I have two skeins of some Lola Bean that I bought several years ago. And um, I've been really wanting to get something in orange. So um, this is a line called Dream Bean and it's Merino Cashmere Silk. And they were talking about this and showing this on the Knit Stars Zoom. And here it is. Can you see that? Hopefully the color will pick up. There we go. That is beautiful and soft. You I'm talking butter. Butter, not butter, butter. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So they were showing things that's made out of this yarn that's in the store. And one of the things that's made is a tea by uh, Jessie Maid Designs. I've not made anything of hers yet, but this will be the first time. And this is called the Outline Tea. I hope it's showing up. Okay. Now, the tea is a, it's a little cropped, but you can make it longer. Here's one that's longer, which is what I plan to do, just to make it just a little bit longer. And so that's what I plan to make out of this. Now this pattern, it's uh, size inclusive. I believe it is, goes up to a size 62. Yes, goes up to a size 62 and um, this is fingering weight yarn and I believe it's worked top down. But, so that's my, one of my sips I purchased this pattern and this beautiful yarn called Iconic yeah, I didn't tell you the name of it. It's called Iconic Orange by Lola Bean Yarn Co. Showcasing Gigi Made It. Gay Gillespie. I think that's how she pronounces her name. Sorry, Gay, if it's wrong. Okay, so that is one of my purchases. It's kind of like a combination purchase. My next purchase is another yarn and pattern combo. And this is a hundred percent Pima cotton from Lion Brand. Isn't that color pretty? It reminds me of raspberry sherbet for the summer. And this colorway is called Cabaret. And I thought that that would just look so great. 
I've never used Lion Brands Pima Cotton. I've uh, used Cascades Pima Cotton. But so this will be a first with this. And the reason why I bought this is because I was surfing um, Ravelry and this pattern came up, the Ura Tee. Isn't that pretty? And it's got some details on it, but I don't think the camera is going to pick it up. Again, another size inclusive pattern. This designer is, her name is um, Lan Ray, and she's of uh, La Nitz Handmade Apparel. And Yura is Nigerian Yoruba language, and it means gold. So, um, I bought this for this particular, specifically to make this tea. Since it's summer here in Arizona and it's very hot, and I'm not going to be wearing any wool sweater, so I want something that's, that's nice uh, and cool and breathable. And it's worked in the round, yes, in the round from the top down, just using um, basic uh, knit stitches. So I think that's going to be beautiful. So that was that combination. Then last but not least, um, Again, I was surfing and I came across this pattern called the Camilla or Camellia, I think it's Camellia T by Claudia Q. And again, I'll be putting links below to all of these patterns. And this pattern here goes up to a 54. Love the wind. It feels good though because it's warm today. Uh, this pattern goes up to a 54. You use fingering weight yarn and a size 3. Point size 3 US 3 and a 3.25 millimeter so not not too not too small I should say but you're using fingering weight yarn and they want something with a lot of drape so the fingering weight yarn that I picked that has a lot of drape of course is my favorite linen quilt by Pearl Soho and they were having a sale, you all. A sale. What's a knitter to do when you are just faced with these things? Look at that. How does that look for summer? This is called Pink Pop. Again, it matches my nails. So, linen quill. You get this kind of like heathered thing going on with the linen that's mixed in because it's 50% uh, fine alpaca. Um, I'm sorry, 50% fine highland wool and 35% alpaca and 15% linen. Isn't that gorgeous? But wait, there's more. So, why not make one tea when you can make two? So my next favorite color is this blue. This is linen quill. This is blue pansy. It's breathtaking. So, I need two of these teas. Look at that. 
like I said, it was on sale. Can you see the heather? The heathering that the, that the linen does. It's just gorgeous. If you have not purchased a knit with some linen quill from Pearl Soho, you need to try and save up to do it. It's it's about I would I don't know what everyone's budget is, so I don't want to overspeak. So I will say it's a it's a mid range price. It normally runs about eighteen dollars U.S. dollars, uh, which isn't terribly costly. But when you're making a sweater and you have to get uh, you know a large quantity, that can add up. So what I usually do is I wait till it goes on sale, and when when I buy it. So this was on sale, and that's why I went ahead and got these. Um, uh, four skeins two of each but if you want to just try it and maybe if you can find just some extra dollars laying around and just buy one skein because you get it's a pretty generous skein you get 439 yards so one skein could make a, a shawl or a cowl uh, definitely a cowl if you wanted to do it or some really you can even make some really nice warm socks out of it. And if you held it double, you could make a pair of DK socks out of it, some shorties maybe. But, you know, you need to try this linen quill and fingering. It also comes in worsted way. I've not tried it in worsted, only in the fingering. And I love it. So that is my Camilla, Camellia. Somebody please correct me too. Okay. So that is all of my yarny, yarn related sips. And I have one other item. So kind of just want to know what are you spending before I show you the last item? What are you spending your summer doing? Do you go on vacation? If so, where do you go? What do you do? Um, Oh my gosh, the biggest yellow jacket just landed back next to me, okay? So if I get up screaming and running with the camera, please follow me on this journey, all right? I think he's gone. As I was saying, what are you planning on doing this summer? What are your plans for this summer? My plans, uh, I have no plans. That's my plan. Uh, I'm going to be doing what I love to do, and that's stay around home knitting. May take a short trip to California to check on um, relatives and say hello, and then head right back home. Uh, again, I'm a big homebody, so we'll see. But I would love, love, love for you to comment and tell me what your plans are for the summer. All right, last item, sip. Because I made year 2022, this is my year of garments. Now that I have all these garments, okay, how do I maintain them? I need to make sure that I maintain them properly. I put them, fold them, put them, put my sweaters <clears throat> in the closet with um, lavender and cedar. But, you know, when you wear them, you can get some, what they call, you know, pilling. So, um, I went onto Amazon and I found this, because I used to have an old, old, old one. I found this gleaner okay. and to take the um, pills off of your knitwear so you know those the pills you get those little balls of yarn you know especially like around high friction areas of the sweater around the, the arms and the, the cuff area so with this particular gleaner, this is where the blades go. You get three different size blades for the weight of yarn that you're using. So there's one that's a fine, a medium, 
and a heavy, like for bulky knits, which I thought that was really cool. That's why I purchased it. I haven't used it yet, but I read all the reviews. The reviews were good. In addition to that, you get this nice lint brush to remove uh, any lint or, you know, if you have animal, animal hair. So, and then this is the, where you would snap the blade on that you need and just go down your garment. So that is my tool. Remember, you know, I told you I'm not a big gadget person, but I, this is a tool, I think, over a gadget to help me um, maintain my knitwear. Why go through all of this trouble of knitting these items, spending money on yarn? I don't care whether I spend, you know, $40 a skein or a dollar a skein and all the time knitting it if I don't maintain it so that it can last me, you know, for years to come. And what we make will last if we take care of it. So I use wool wash and lay my items flat, fold them up, put them with, like I said, lavender and um, cedar so that, you know, no moths will get to it. Um, and then it comes in this cute little bag. So, and the name of the company that this one is called is called Gleaner. I used to have one of those ones that was like with the little rotary blade on it that used to eat everything. It was very, very, very inexpensive. Effective, but in, inexpensive. And it took a couple batteries. But this, totally powered by me. So no batteries needed. That's my tool. All right. Well, that's it for today. Um, those are all of the items that I have. Thank you again so very, very much for joining in and watching me. If you'd like to see the June um, Yarnable unboxing, I'll have that in a separate video as well. So pop on over and see that. Make sure you give that one a thumbs up uh, that you like it as well as this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I will be coming to you again maybe in another week or so, uh, depending on how much I have to show you. I don't want to bore you if I haven't made any progress on anything, but I'm hoping in the upcoming week I will have made some progress on things. Um, as always, um, stay safe and be blessed. Bye for now.